to um, uh, sort of focus on is that making healthy food choices today uh, are based on some of those traditional messages that we looked at from, from Plato, from Hippocrates, from Confucius, and now our science and research is beginning to say, yeah, yeah, that does make sense. There are properties in ginger. Oh, and turmeric. Oh my goodness, it's the miracle spice. Uh, and uh, where you're living, uh, Francois, they've known that for centuries. So science, it's, it, it's like Western, we need to have bum, bum, bum. We need to prove it to me by the science. And science is beginning to come around and look at some of these. Um, which is good, uh, areas. which is good. Yes. yes, and one of my recommendations to anyone that's interested in knowing more about food and food choices is to look at the China study um, written by one of my mentors and professors, Dr. Uh, Colin Campbell from Cornell University. He's the head of nutrition there for many years. So this is kind of a funny little cartoon and Michelangelo's statue was uh, put on loan to North America and returned to Italy looking a little different after it had been exposed to uh, North American culture. So um, not to put down any particular fast food chain, but just uh, something that it does impact you. And you really, it's being mindful of that. Um, processed foods, we talked about that earlier on. Um, the apple, I don't need a label. The only label the apple gets is a number, and I do a whole workshop on labeling, is a number and that'll tell you where it comes from, whether it's organic or gen genetically modified. The label on this would uh, also tell you what country it came from. So, but if you're just going most most, uh, um, pro most processed foods require by law nutritional labels. They're filled with chemical additives, preservatives. They're fortified and enriched, and that's different. Um, they, will, they will, for example, wheat. They take all the, the iron and the minerals and vitamins out of it. They bleach the wheat, and then they will put it back in and that's with something. Uh, or they'll fortify, you'll see cereals are fortified, breads are fortified, and they're all fortified with chemically fragmented vitamins. And the other thing is you have to be careful with the packaging materials themselves, that some of those materials have been found to leach into the foods. So therefore you're getting something that's packaged and uh, is impacting that. Um, one of the things that Western culture uh, prides themselves is that, oh, the average uh, uh, age of uh, longevity has gone up. And um, yes, that's true. But if you live longer, it's a question then of what uh, chronic degenerative disease will you develop um, and which one might you get. So looking at living longer or existing longer. We have a lot of people that exist, but let's take a look at some statistics and I'm not sure if they fit for uh, everyone, but, but when we look at the genesis of disease, uh, in human history, most times that populations were wiped out was because of an infection. Uh, and we, we know some sort of a uh, virus or bacterial thing wiped out people. Um, and that's been one of the most common causes of um, uh, disease. Uh, today though, people that are born in, in more developed countries, we don't have to worry about sanitation and lack of nutrition uh, to wipe us out. And so we've had an increased life expectancy, but more degenerative disease. So degenerative disease has replaced infectious disease as the biggest problem in the world today. 
and uh, uh, we had a picture of those little guys um, getting food. Their concern is just survival and food scarcity. We're not worried about that. We're worried about chronic degenerative disease based on the food choices people are making. And the, uh, the problem with that is that we're looking at just by living, we incur oxidative stress. Uh, if I take this apple and cut it in about four hours, it will begin to oxidize. Um, and so we have that oxidation going on inside our body all the time. And the free radicals are what we, we have just in burning calories. It's the exhaust that comes out. It's the ashes after burning your logs. So um, we have a lot of studies now that have shown that oxidative stress plays a huge role in chronic disease. Right. So the anecdote to free radicals, the only one are antioxidants. So when you look at free radicals, I thought I was a free radical in the 60s when I was running around with my placards. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I realized that free radicals are running around in my body and causing um, uh, inflammation and oxidative stress. Yes. So the only way, the only way, it's not an animal-based uh, food, it is plant-based, that you will naturally be able to reduce the uh, oxidative stress. So um, there are a lot of studies that, that have found that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables can protect against chronic degenerative disease. Uh, including cancer, health disease, stroke, macular degeneration. There's a lot of research. You eat a lot of greens. Uh, but, but then, just to give you an example there, if you were taking uh, uh, something for cholesterol, like the, our pharmaceutical comes in, then they've said, oh, you can't eat greens. Well, if you can't eat greens, then your leaves you open for macular degeneration because we know that eating a lot of greens will will prevent some of these um uh problems yeah. so it becomes a domino effect if you're on medications so the perfect anecdote to free radicals of fruits and vegetables and just to give an example this apple as i said holds over ten thousand phytonutrients Back in the 30s and 40s, they had the technology to identify about 14 or 15 phytonutrients. And they called those vitamins. Mm. Well, now we know there's five, about five milligram of vitamin C in this apple. But the amazing is that there are also um, 10,000 other phytonutrients, phytochemicals that come into play that work in synergy with the vitamin C. And that's the key. It works in synergy. That's why mother nature, my mother used to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, that she was not far off. That's for sure. The synergy in that, uh, among those 10,000 phytonutrients are powerful, powerful. And to me, that's just breaking down, wow, that energy, now they're trying to quantify it. But we know it's been there for uh, 5,000, 6,000 years. Yep. Yes. Forever. Forever. So the scientists, the scientists are discovering that all these different colors have a different set of phytonutrients. There's some great research on molecular nutrition and food research. And even Time Magazine talked about, we are what we eat, not the vitamins we take, but what we eat. Because each one of these colors has a different print in terms of phytonutrient um, 
content. But I believe that we are going to, to talk about the colors very, very soon, right? Uh, in a future. Uh, yes, in a, for sure. Um, so people are, are confused and uh, um, there have been some studies with people taking the fragmented vitamins um, where they've had to stop it. There was a 25,000 nurses were being studied in the United States on vitamin E and they had to stop the study because there were so many getting sick. So uh, if you're not taking things that, and again, they go in synergy. If I'm taking a, a particular vitamin, I need something to, to be able to work so that that can be absorbed naturally. If I take too much iron, that can be dangerous. Um, too much vitamin A may increase risk of uh, hip fractures and how many people uh, uh, over the age of 60 are being told take uh, a vitamin and uh, it might be actually hurting you. There was uh, research done with smokers that, um, and vitamin E. And so you have to be really careful um, because it's not natural and it's synthetic. So we assume and have made the assumption, and I took vitamins, I assumed that my diet back when I was in my 40s and 50s was missing something. And they led me to believe that. I knew that the, the food sources were depleting, and that the, the apple, this apple isn't the same apple as grew on my grandparents' apple tree in terms of nutrient value. Um, so, we have to think about that vitamin intake. And um, sometimes we don't always, whoop, that one I went through. So just some statistics that are kind of interesting. Four out of every 10 Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer sometime in their life. I don't know how that impacts other countries. We have different, um, uh, one out of three of us will die from heart disease. And the saddest thing is that 50% of heart attacks, the first one, you never recover from it. You're, you're gone. So you can feel well and then boom. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens coach just had a stint put in. He says, I'm perfect. He has no clue. He has to change his diet, his stress levels, he has to manage. Uh, there's some things that have to happen. Heart disease is there. And um, we don't often feel wellness or illness until it is really upon us. Um, we've gotten to a point where being depressed or having arthritis are, oh, that's just a part of you. Get, you're over 65. Get used to it. That, that, that's the attitude. Here, I'll give you a pill for it. It'll help you sleep and there's your pain. You do not have to have arthritis and you do not have to be depressed after 65. It is not natural, a normal part of aging. In many cultures, uh, the older person is looked upon as a source of information. And I feel that uh, in our culture, the older person is, they check out. They go to God's holding ground to just wait and die. They do the New York Times, uh, um, crossword puzzles and uh, they read books and they just wait around um, because no one is asking them to to share their knowledge or their skills and I would like to see more of my generation catch on fire to the fact that they have something to offer to the next generation and um, like you are I, doing today by the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to me, that's critical. And living beyond 80 is the, the, the keeping people alive. But again, are they just existing? And talking about how many fruits and vegetables do I need to eat? That's the next question. You're saying, okay, Susan, I get it. Uh, the World Health, Health Organization is saying seven to 10. Uh, I just heard another one that was 12. Uh, 10 to 12. So it's becoming increasingly aware that um, 
we need more fruits and vegetables. And that most Europeans and North Americans, um, we don't have a vitamin deficiency because people are buying vitamins, they're buying food, bread, the basics, bread, cereals, um, uh, canned soups, any of your canned foods, they're all fortified with some vitamin. And so you're not, you're, we're not in a vitamin deficiency. We're in a deficiency of fresh fruits and vegetable intake. Right, right, right. So um, when I look at what we learned from our ancestors in some of those ancient traditions uh, about eating natural foods, fresh foods, unprocessed, clean that are free from chemicals and colorings and dyes and it's plant-based current research groups heart and stroke foundation cancer education and research brain and aging arthritis the md anderson looking at ovarian cancer pediatric research are all saying gee whiz uh there's something to that um about fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, so these groups are beginning to bring that, the ancient methods, messages, and the research together to say, yeah, those old guys 3,000 years ago were onto something. Right. So, uh, so um, it means that the research is confirming, which is not bad also. It's, it's a good Exactly. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I work, uh, one of my um, childhood friends uh, is a researcher and um, so it's it's great to know that independent research is being done and confirming that so we do know that whole foods um, this was a work done by excellent two French Canadian uh, research I've never met them they are my idols uh, they looked at the enzyme and the molecular structure of particular food groups and match that to a particular type of cancer, yeah. how it could keep the cancer from um, invading uh, the body even further. Uh, excellent work um, yeah, yeah. that they've done. And, and, uh, and I, tried, I tried to contact uh, Dr. Bilbo and could not, but uh, I understand that he's one of the best uh, in the world, in that uh, in that field. Uh, oh, Bellevo and Jean Gras, they wrote the the uh, Les Elements contre le Cancer. The, their their books are they're my Bible. Um, yeah, yeah, because they they are talking about the enzymes and uh, there is a very the molecular structure exactly. Yes, so there is very few approach and very few research. Uh, there is a lot about vitamins, antioxidants now. But enzymes are playing a great role also. Well, that, well that's what they, the antioxidants are the enzymes. Oh. That's what they're talking about is that, and they, they have the food groups like the alum group, the cruciferous family in each group of foods target a particular uh, type of cancer. Right. One of the nice things about their research Red wine and dark, 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 dark chocolate, organic, <laughs> coming from uh, uh, good, good cocoa beans, fair, fair uh, are a part of uh, good foods to uh, um, fight yeah. cancer. Yeah. So this is showing that phytonutrients are better than vitamins, because yeah. vitamins are only one of 10,000 that yes. are in this apple. It, it, there is more than vitamin, but you added more dark, dark, dark chocolate because chocolate can be confusing because chocolate are having a lot of uh, supplements in, uh, as sugar, right? Oh, and that's why I'm, I'm talking about the cocoa powder. Yeah. Uh, the dark the raw, cocoa the raw powder cocoa powder. sugar. Yeah. Not a chocolate bar. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Not a chocolate dark bar. Chocolate. Right, right. Yeah. I understand. So... The other thing I'd like to point out, and this is something uh, we can discuss in a further presentation, is your DNA is not your destiny. People used to say, oh, well, everybody in my family has got that, so I can just get used to it. Well, for example, my family, dairy farmers, everybody's got kidney stones. Oh, well, that's just the way it is. Well, yeah, 
they're consuming so many dairy products and we begin to look at it. Yeah, uh huh. So it's not your DNA. It's more often the environment that brought you to a certain food choice and that lifestyle. has created to and lifestyle. So I, I look at families, chunky children, chunky mom and dad, overweight children, overweight mom and dad. So we're looking at your lifestyle is really your destiny. You do not have, and if you do, that 15% of those genes that, that are there, you don't have to activate them. You don't have to shake it and say, oh, hello, you know, I'm going to eat a lot of sugar and you're going to wake up and yeah. cause havoc in my body. No, you can manage and, uh, your DNA. That's for sure. So uh, this just makes me kind of chuckle. Uh, fruits and vegetables are uh, an important part of our life and needs to be the majority of what we um, take in. And again, just uh, reinforcing that processed foods, they require labels and things that really can um, impede our way to reaching um, an awareness of our own potential and our own spirituality. And we know that certain foods can impact different areas of our body, like the research done by Belvo and Jane Craw, specifically to cancer, how certain foods impact certain areas of our body. For example, in their research, they found that um, the cru cruciferous families of foods, which cabbage is there, are excellent for the intestinal tract. Right. And, and uh, someone that I work with said, wow, I should prescribe, the doctor said, I should prescribe um, five servings of coleslaw every week. I said, yes. <laughs> yes. Rather than a pill, five servings of, so food you eat can change how you feel, how you think. It impacts your genes. Um, your cells need good nutrition for energy. They get, they get coated with, with junk, with crap, and they can't function. And your cells uh, and, and food you eat can change how you feel. Yeah. So it's important. Uh, there are a few studies, a, a couple that are done here in Canada with children that look at food additives. And um, like these are two um, things like that kids talk. like a lot. Um, one study looked at hyperactive kids, and this was um, uh, hyperactive children, and they found that food dyes adversely impacted 17 of those 20 children in performing a learning task. And when, and when they took those 20 children and took them off of foods with dyes, they were able to do that. And they flipped the group. Once they flipped it, the kids got distracted, could not. So it really demonstrates that it has almost an immediate impact, those food dyes. So if you're getting your kids uh, uh, birthday cakes with uh, all sorts of artificial colors, it's going to impact performance. There was another one uh, done at the Alberta Children's Hospital looking at hyperactivity. Again, they found that when these things, the uh, MSG preservatives and caffeine were eliminated from the diet, again, there was an improvement in their um, um, behaviors. Yeah, there is a direct so, in between uh, attention deficit disorders and uh, food intakes as well, right? There was exactly. a lot of research, not only on children, but children are a little bit more sensitive than adults on these things. So right, is, right. Yes, and it, it is more fragile. I hear a lot of people over 60 say, oh, I'm in a brain fog, I'm in a brain fog. And I think it's affecting everybody's brain. Yeah. And uh, so, um, yes, we did the study on children. Um, because parents, they throw them in the back of the car and say, here's a Pepsi and some Skittles and go for it. And then they wonder why the kids are screaming and having to go to the bathroom. 
So, uh, and, but I found this interesting. There was a food allergist said that over 50% of his patients were sensitive to the kinds of things that are found in foods. And there's a great um, researcher, Blaylock, that talks about the exotoxins mm -hmm. in the food. Right. Yeah. Or neurotoxins, some of them are, they're, they're uh, and we'll get into that uh, in more in depth when we hit um, the air, the, yes. So I'm just uh, throwing this out here today as the kinds of um, things we'll look at when we, we get into that. One thing I'd just like to point out, and I will probably go over this again in, in um, uh, the other lectures, is how is food prepared? That's critical. Raw, you're getting almost 100% um, oh, of that, the nutrients are there. My body's able to assimilate it. It becomes bioavailable, depending on how much. Um, some people have a lot of uh, acid reflux, digestive issues, but mostly if you eat raw spinach, uh, you're going to get 100% of the nutrients. And this is looking at uh, studying the, the nutrients, the, the fruit or vegetable after doing this. So we know that if you steam or stir fry or bake, about 11% are lost. If you boil and boil and boil and boil, you're losing about six, you know, two thirds of the nutrients. But what people don't realize is microwaving, really, you just have zapped, you've changed the molecular structure of, of those nutrients and they're no longer what they were before you stuck them in the microwave. And um, so you're basically eating empty food at that moment. Empty food, yeah, exactly. So if you've gone up to all the trouble and gotten organic asparagus in the spring and then you cook it in your microwave, you might as well have eaten the box that uh, <laughs> sat on the counter yeah. um, in terms of nutrient value. So food preparation has a big impact on the, the food. And the other thing is, is how does the food get to you? And um, uh, how long has it been in transit? This mm -hmm. is going to really, really become a concern in the next 18 months because food production in the various areas of the planet has diminished because we have not had the labor to do that. Harvesting um, is an issue. But how far has it traveled? 6,000 miles, 3,000 miles. And in that traveling process, it often has to stay in a cold storage area. Right. Uh, if you remember near Dorval, you see these huge buildings, cold storage. All foods that come in from Chile or Mexico or California head there. They're quarantined. They go into the food storage. That, that building has been sprayed with fungicides, pesticides, uh, to ensure that it's clean. So even if you put your organic stuff that's traveled, it goes into this environment. Um, so the traveling of food has become a real, real nightmare. Um, and then those that are concerned about that carbon footprint, um, that big pharma makes on the foods. One of the things that's important to also realize um, is how long has that food item been off of the vine? How long has it been harvested? Usually um, it's seven to 10 days that romaine lettuce is cut in California but by the time it gets to an IGA and to your table. I don't know what the time frame is in Sri Lanka, um, but we're looking at the depreciation of the food as it loses right. its Properties. nutrient value. So time is an enemy to fresh food. Yeah. After eight days, they say in storage, spinach uses almost half of its yeah, it's it fresh anymore. Right. So if you go and buy a big box of spinach, 
you're wasting your money. Buy a small one, eat that up in a week, and next week, buy another one or get it out of your garden. The bigger is not always better. Um, once you take fruit off of a, a vine, it goes into a decaying process. The cell membranes begin to make break down. Um, a tomato, people take it off the vine and let it sit. It is decaying. It's not ripening. It just decays. It's not receiving any more nutrients from the earth, from the from the water that's in that plant. Uh, the, the the nutrients that are coming through the vine, the, the that's been cut off, and um, so we know that those foods that are coming to us are not that. Um, I'm going to go on a little sidebar here. I, I've been introduced to a group called the Slow Food Movement. Right. Have you heard of them, Francois? Of course, a lot. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, an amazing uh, group. Uh, it started with a visionary um, when they were trying to get a McDonald's in Italy at the uh, Spanish Steps, right there in the middle of uh, a, a holy place. And they were just appalled to think that a McDonald's would go there. And so they started the slow food movement. It started in Europe. And what they're looking at, their, their pillars, is that the food source, the source you come from, sustains the individual, it sustains the family, and it sustains the community. Yeah. And that, that is critical. Yeah. Um, they, they encourage you to buy local, grow your own, and if you're paying for something that's coming from, check to see if it's got this, this uh, particular seal on it. That means there's the fair trade, the fair price has been paid, working conditions have been, been fair and equitable. So it really um, is an amazing way to choose if you're choosing food um, and keeping yourself mindful. I, I'm mindful at this time of year, I want to consume as much as I can from my local farmer here on Il Perot. Yeah, I, I knew that movement so much that once upon a time, uh, I wanted to make a documentary on that, and it, uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But uh, uh, that was called, I remember, my God, you are opening. Um, it was called Slow is Beautiful. And, Slow. <laughs> but because this movement has inspired a lot of other slow movement, right? So I, I yeah. will dig in my laptop if I can find that. But uh, I wanted to make a document, a series of documentary of, of uh, not only slow food, but it inspired a lot of uh, social movement. And it was right. slow is beautiful. Right. And it, they also inspired people to, um, to use the, the traditional, like if potatoes are grown in your, your area that you you learn how to cook the potatoes the way the grandmothers and the great grandmother did. Um, my grandmother, uh, she never cooked a potato all by itself. It had a little green onions in it or had something. She never boiled the potato on its own. It, it, it had a friend with it. <laughs> so, oh, yes. so these uh, slow movement encourage people to go back to some of the old uh, traditions of preparing food. And that, that intrigued me also about this movement. So right. uh, looking at food, sustainable food systems, you might recognize this gentleman. Yeah. Uh, he was very much involved in a foundation um, for a food bank uh, in um, Los Angeles. And they had these vertical growing systems that had been developed at the Epcot Center uh, there. Um, so that you can, one, one tower garden can sustain food throughout a year for four, a family of four. So we're going to talk about that, the vertical uh, Just briefly, it's looking at vertical farming. There are all kinds of vertical farms all around the world, um, looking at alternative growing on the rooftop. And, and the, there um, is one just behind you. Yes, I one, <laughs> yes. Um, these are restaurants that are using the, the vertical gardens to grow. 
So um, we'll go into that in more detail. So just in conclusion um, for today's presentation, being mindful uh, as a consumer, how is the food grown? What kind of seeds were used? Who harvested the food? Under what conditions? How was it transported? The carbon footprint, is it natural? Is it clean? Did I look at the label? And, and there's a whole lecture right there, Francois, that I, I give on label reading. Um, do I know what's in the food that I'm eating? Do I need this food? Do I crave it? And so many of the manufactured foods, they have built in the sugars and the chemicals so that we crave it. And it's a tragedy that um, we haven't been uh, able to break those um, habits. Habits. So prepare your food uh, in the next few days. Thinking of color, eat the rainbow, vegetables and fruits and whole grains, smell, add lots of good smell and spices and tastes, a variety of textures. Uh, be happy when uh, you're looking at that. And sometimes I know when you're tired, you say, I know as a mom, uh, I apologize to my grown adult children and grandchildren, not with my grandchildren so much. I was joyful and happy to prepare food for them because I had the time. With my children, I remember coming home from work and saying, oh, what am I gonna fix for dinner? And the weeks and days that I planned and prepared and was joyful and happy, that it was a better day, a better evening, a better gathering of the family. Um, and know that you're giving that food to yourself and others with gratitude. So in conclusion, I would say to try to connect with the spirit of food and being mindful, honor the food that you're taking in, engage your six senses, the taste, the texture, the smell, um, eat slowly, eat three meals a day, eat natural, have the ultimate fast food, a fresh fruit or vegetable. I remember as a kid going out into the garden at this time of year and eating a cucumber, eating it just like that, crunch, 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 was so good. Eat with awareness, and not only just awareness of what you're eating, but aware that that uh, well, is connected to a higher way. spirit. In so a plant-based diet for your health and for yeah. the planet. It, it is connected to the source. Yes, connected to source. That is fantastic. This is going to be uh, more than 10 presentations because we have a lot to say and a lot to share. And I believe that people are going to be mind blown by this. And uh, well, Dr. Susan, I'm looking forward for the next one because uh, we just opened a huge book over here now. And that's <laughs> a very important topic, right? Because uh, we need to eat every day. This is something that we do every day. Yeah, yeah. every day you honor the temple, the, the, the house of your soul. Every day you're taking care of it. Right. You're either, you're either taking care of it or you're hurting it. Yes, of course. Better we take care of it, huh? because we, 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 don't yes. have, we don't want to have degenerative uh, disease. We want to live long and we want to be happy for a long period of time because when we grow older, we want to share, isn't it? That's right, right. I, uh, I, uh, and as I said, I'm not afraid to say I'm 79 and to me, my, I'm on mission nutrition, and I want to encourage as many people as possible to join mission nutrition because that will save your life.